very dear Sarah, and I have to tell you that we don't have the original letter. I've got to assume, and every woman knows this too, that it's in her grave. She took it to her grave with her. And so what we had was not unlike that Dear Abby column that got clipped for its wisdom and magneted to the refrigerator door, people copied it and sent it around. And the E's got changed to the and you and all these different things. I've, I've seen 10 or 12 different written versions. In fact, the one I have in my pocket was typed out from uh, uh, a letter, a version of the letter that was found in the Illinois State Historical Society. So it traveled all the way out west. Illinois. My very dear Sarah, the indications are very strong that we shall move in a few days, perhaps tomorrow. Lest I should not be able to write again, I feel impelled to write a few lines that may fall under your eye when I shall be no more. I have no misgivings about or lack of confidence in the cause in which I am engaged, and my courage does not halt or falter. I know how strongly American civilization now leans on the triumph of the government, and how great a debt we owe to those who went through, who went before us through the blood and suffering of the revolution. And I am willing, perfectly willing, to lay down all my joys in this life to help maintain this government and to pay that debt. Sarah, my love for you is deathless. It seems to bind me with mighty cables that nothing but omnipotence could break. And yet my love of country comes over me like a strong wind and bears me irresistibly on with all these chains to the battlefield. The memories of the blissful moments I have spent with you come creeping over me, and I feel most gratified to God and to you that I have enjoyed them so long, and how hard it is for me to give them up and burn to ashes the hopes of future years when, God willing, we might still have lived and loved together and seen our sons grown up to honorable manhood around us. I have, I know, but very few and small claims upon divine providence. But something whispers to me, perhaps it is the wafted prayer of my little Edgar, that I shall return to my loved ones unharmed. If I do not, my dear Sarah, never forget how much I love you. And when my last breath escapes me on the battlefield, it will whisper your name. Forgive my many faults and the many pains I have caused you. How thoughtless and foolish I have oft times been. How gladly would I wash out with my tears every little spot upon your happiness. But, oh, Sarah, if the dead can come back to this earth and flit unseen around those they love, I shall always be near you, in the gladdest days and in the darkest night. Always, always. And if there be a soft breeze upon your cheek, it shall be my breath as the cool air fans your throbbing temple. It shall be my spirit passing by. Sarah, do not mourn me dead. Think I am gone and wait for me, for we shall meet again. Sullivan Blue was killed a week later at the first battle of the Bull Rock.